Hello and welcome to this second video tutorial in our series of tutorials looking at game creation in Stencil. And this particular video is a follow-up to the first one where we're still looking at, at, at creating the sprites and graphics you're going to need to import into Stencil so you can make your game. Um, in this video we're going to focus specifically on created at creating animated sprites. So if you haven't seen the first video on creating regular sprites in Piscale, uh, I suggest you go and have a look at that one and then come back here when you're done. Okay, so if you have seen that one, I'm going to give you an idea of the kind of thing that we can make and how to do it. So this is my sprite library here, the ones that I've created. And you'll notice if I hover over some of these, that they are animated, not animated very well, but they are animated nonetheless. And actually making animated sprites in Pixel, uh, Piscale, so it isn't very difficult. So let's have a look at how it's done. So we'll create a sprite from scratch, clicking the create sprite icon. And we start as we usually do. Here's our, our canvas. I'm gonna start by setting a smaller pen size. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a, a very simple moving circle animation. Um, so I'm going to use a circle tool. Let's just make a bright color. Let's just go for that color. And I'm going to make a circle. So I'm just going to start in the top left of my screen and draw a circle. So that's the first frame of my animation. And you'll see that it that appears just like the sprite did before in this preview window at the top left. Now what I can do at this point is one of two things if I want to make an animated sprite. I could either duplicate or make a copy of this frame and it would add literally another frame to this sprite and it would work very much like one of those flick books works or old fashioned animations work where it, each part of the animation is represented in a different frame. Or I could actually add a blank frame. Um, and I'll show you the difference between those two things. But, uh, I'm actually going to create a, a blank frame. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go add a new frame. And there is my first frame. Well, sorry, there's my second frame, which is completely blank. And you can see, again, in this preview on the top right, it's flashing on and off. Because what's actually happening is it's previewing what the animation between these two frames looks like. Now, if you're going to work with creating a blank frame every time, it's always very helpful to have some idea of what the previous frame looked like and how it was laid out. So it makes it easier for you to, to kind of create an accurate frame drawing in the second one. I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean. If I click on the onion skin option here, you can see that what's happening is I've got a, a faint outline of, of the previous frame there. So we can use this as a guide to create my second frame. So I'm going to move just to say here and then just draw a circle and that fits inside that one and you can see what's happened there it's added that frame there and I'm going to add a new one and you can now see that the onion skin again has worked and that now shows the second frame so what I can do is I can move down to say here and I can add a third frame and you can add as many of these as you want add new frame let's go down to say here I'm not very good at this as you can tell but nevertheless I am creating um, a working animated GIF as you can see and then let's just finish with that one so there across my five frames you don't have to do five frames but there is a five frame animated GIF and I'll, if I switch the onion skinning off you can see that all it shows in each frame is the actual content of the frame I can change the frames per second if I want as well look at the difference between 24 frames per second and a very minimal like one frame per second much slower so you can set that as you want I think about 12 frames per second is fine for what I want to do here and then there's two things to do the first thing to do is to save to your gallery so I'm going to call it uh, animated circle and then I'm just going to save it in the gallery and then if I want to, what I can do is download it. And if you're going to download it, export as image or animated GIF. That's the option you want. And then 
it gives me an option to change the scale and things which I don't want to do but I want to do it as just a standard download here so this one click download and there is my animated circuit. In fact, that's come as a, as a PNG. So if we're going to GIF mode, there we go. I can download it there. So I've actually downloaded it in two formats, PNG and animated circle GIF. That's the one that I want. So now I'm actually saved that and I've got a working animated GIF. The other way you can do this if you want to, and I think it depends on the type of picture that you're making, is you could try cloning or duplicating a frame so if I do maybe if you're doing a more complicated image and you're making a more subtle change in the animation you might find it easier to, to do some cloning so I'm just gonna make something very random indeed I don't even know what this is so let's just fill that and then if I click the cloak the duplicate this frame I've then got it there and then what I can do if I want to is I can just make a very subtle change between the two frames like that so if I know that what I'm going to make isn't going to have a lot of, a lot of difference and a lot of changes it may be just quicker for me just to duplicate the frame like that but you will probably want to practice both of these methods and use whichever one is easiest with you so hopefully you've seen how straightforward it is to create an animated sprite in Fiscal now it needs a bit of practice um, always important to plan your graphics before you make them and good luck.